Lake. Three years ago, I had just returned from a trip from Niagara Falls with my family for the 4th of July. We were all very exhausted after a long day of driving, so my husband and I put the kids right to bed and called it a night. At about 4 am, I woke up thinking my husband had gotten up to use the restroom. I used the moment to steal back the sheets, only to wake him in the process. I apologized and told him how he got out of bed. When he turned to face me, he gasped and pulled his feet up from the end of the bed so quickly his knee almost knocked me out of the bed. He then grabbed me and said nothing. After adjusting to the dark for a half second, I was able to see what caused the strange reaction. At the foot of the bed, sitting and facing away from us, there was what appeared to be a naked man, or a large hairless dog of some sort. Its body position was disturbing and unnatural, as if it had been hit by a car or something. For some reason, I was not instantly frightened by, but more concerned as to its condition. At this point I was somewhat under the assumption that we were supposed to help him. My husband was peering over his arm and knee, tucked into the fetal position, occasionally glancing at me before returning to the creature. In a flurry of motion, the creature scrambled around the side of the bed, and then crawled quickly in a flailing sort of motion right along the bed until it was less than a foot from my husband's face. The creature was completely silent for about 30 seconds, or probably closer to 5, it just seemed like a while, just looking at my husband. The creature then placed its hand on his knee and ran into the hallway, leading to the kids' rooms. I screamed and ran for the light switch, planning to stop him before he heard my children. When I got to the hallway, the light from the bedroom was enough to see it crouching and hunched over about 20 feet away. He turned around and looked directly at me, covered in blood. I flipped the switch on the wall and saw my daughter Clara. The creature ran down the stairs while my husband and I rushed to help our daughter. She was very badly injured and spoke only once more in her short life. She said he is the rake. My husband drove his car into a lake that night, while rushing our daughter to the hospital. He did not survive. Being a small town, news got around pretty quickly. The police were helpful at first, and the local newspaper took a lot of interest as well. However, the story was never published and the local television news never followed up either. For several months, my son Justin and I stayed in a hotel near my parents' house. After we decided to return home, I began looking for answers myself. I eventually located a man in the next town over who had a similar story. We got in contact and began talking about our experiences. He knew of two other people in New York who had seen the creature we now refer to as the rake. It took the four of us about two solid years of hunting on the internet and writing letters to come up with a small collection of what we believed to be accounts of the rake. None of them gave any details, history or follow up. One journal had an entry involving the creature in its first three pages and never mentioned it again. A ship's log explained nothing of the encounter, saying only that they were told to leave by the rake. That was the last entry in the log. There were, however, many instances where the creature's visit was one of a series of visits with the same person. Multiple people also mentioned being spoken to, my daughter included. This led us to wonder if the rake had visited any of us before our last encounter. I set up a digital recorder near my bed and left it running all night, every night, for two weeks. I would tediously scan through the sounds of me rolling around in my bed each day when I woke up. By the end of the second week, I was quite used to the occasional sound of sleep while blurring through the recording at eight times the normal speed. This still took almost an hour every day, on the first day of the third week, I thought I heard something different. What I found was a shrill voice. It was the rake. I can't listen to it long enough to even begin to transcribe it. I haven't let anyone listen to it yet. 
All I know is that I'd heard it before, and I now believe that it spoke when it was sitting in front of my husband. I don't remember hearing anything at the time, but for some reason, the voice on the recorder immediately brings me back to that moment. The thoughts that must have gone through my daughter's head make me very upset. I have not seen the wreck since he ruined my life, but I know that he has been in my room while I slept. I know and fear that one night I'll wake up to see him staring at me. The Rake I'm going to cut to the chase. Today, I was walking home from my job at a Met Spa a few blocks away from my house. For some reason, there was a lot of traffic in that area, so I just decided to take a shortcut home. I at the time, wasn't thinking about how stupid that was because I'd never been down these roads before. As opposed to walking straight across the street, I made a left and figured I'd just cross later on down the street where the gaps between oncoming cars should remain long enough for me to spring though. Just as I was about to turn right onto the street again, I could feel my phone vibrating in my ear-shaped book bag. I shrugged it off of them shoulders and held it in one hand, using the other to force into the book bag and paw around for the phone. I pulled out my phone, zipped the backpack up all the way, and slipped it back over one of my shoulders. I glanced down at the phone, my mom was calling. I tapped the answer button to raise the phone to the side of my face, still walking. Hello. I got no reply, just some static and muffled voices in the background. It sounded like my mom and her longtime friend who I'd known since I was about four. I rolled my eyes, hung up, and slid the phone into my pocket. When I looked up, I realized I had forgotten to turn down the street to my right. I figured it wasn't that big of a deal, I could try to find my way back or just call for someone to pick me up. I have friends with cars. I did what would probably sound like an overly dramatic sigh upon turning around, but I didn't continue walking. I have locked eyes with the most repulsive thing I'd probably ever seen in my life. I couldn't move, I just stood there with my face blank and my eyes wide in shock. I wanted to move, to launch into motion and run to someone's house and beg for them to let me in, but I couldn't. I just couldn't. I just stared at it. It was crouching on all fours, and it was a ash and gray color, and its skin looked like the surface of a powdered donut, just gray instead of white. It had a pretty human body, too, it was just hairless, but incredibly thin. Beyond anorexic thin. All of its bones were prominent. It began to crawl toward me, it was around 15 feet away, but I was still horrified. I could feel the muscles in my torso tighten, and my knees began to tremble. Both of my hands flexed open, which I figured was indicative that I could move again. An unusual squeak forced itself from the back of my throat as I turned on my heel and held ass down the street. It was probably because I pushed all of my muscles to move immediately, but either way, I just thought of it as weird afterwards. So yeah, I ran as fast as I could in the direction of my friend's house. She'd moved around a month ago, and gave me directions to her new house in case it was raining when I came home from work which was weird, because my house was closer to it than her is. Either way, I made it to her doorstep. I didn't know whether it actually followed me or not, but I wasn't risking anything. I threw myself onto her doorstep and beat the door with my fist at least 12 times until she answered. I darted past her and into the house, pulled her away from the door, and slammed it shut, then locked the bottom lock because I didn't have keys to lock the top one. She demanded an explanation for my interesting entrance, and I told her everything. She brought up something about this thing called a rake. So I looked it up on her laptop, and immediately felt nauseous. Normally, I'd love to stay at her house and chill, but I wanted nothing more than to go home. So she made me eat something and then she drove me home. 
It's been 6 hours since then, and I'm really worried it might find me. I keep thinking, what if it waited outside until we left the house? What if it followed her car to my house? What's going to happen if it finds me? I'm honestly terrified. I've read several stories about the rake, supposedly real accounts, creepypasties, random stories on other sites. My dad is supposed to return home in a few hours, so that's sort of reassuring. Anyway, I figured this story should be slash the sleep worthy, so I hope it is, because this experience definitely scared the hell out of me.